wide. Right over the slip. Slips in behind. Hopkins chasing. Shoots and scores! Great forward again. Here we go! Lines it up. Hey, Alain! Lines it into the bottom corner! Very well there. Moffat. Cut inside. Moffat! What the fuck? Welcome back to FBTV, part of the Football Brisbane Media Group. I'm Robert Blanche, and we're here at Underwood Park for this Round 17 Vito League clash between Rochdale Rovers and Lions FC. I'm joined today by Football Brisbane analyst Dave Thoroughgood. Dave, firstly, welcome to the team, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, nice to be here. It's a, it's a lovely day, good game of football expected on a, on a not bad surface, so yeah, looking forward to it. It should be a crackerjack game. Two sides... In, in different form mm. at the moment, uh, not picking up points, but not playing bad football. Uh, today, one of them really need to take the three points. Yeah, exactly right. I think this could be crunch time today, as you said. They're, um, their recent form hasn't been particularly good with regards to points on the board, uh, but they haven't been playing bad football. The last two games for uh, Rochdale Rovers have been back-to-back -back losses, so today would be really, really crucial. I just said to Paulie earlier that um, the last time Rochdale lost three games on the trot, well, when would that be? That, I, I that... can't remember it and research really, I look back for a number of years mm. and I can't find that being the case. Yeah, exactly right. And obviously from, from, from Ross's point of view as well, you know, he would have been disappointed to have uh, lost, or not lost, but the game got drawn last week in the 94th minute when Redland scored that penalty, um, when three points looked in the bag. So uh, yeah, both sides have got a lot to prove. Rochdale, as I said, after back-to-back -back defeats, will want to get back on track. And a win today could potentially take them top of the table. For uh, Queensland Lions, uh, they're sitting ninth at the moment, but for a win for them, could take them as high as fifth in the table. So that's how close it can be. We interviewed the, uh, the coaches before the game, and uh, this is what Tim Brown had to say prior to the match. An important game today for both clubs playing, but especially for yourselves with uh, recent form. Any changes to the lineup today? Uh, yes, we've got um, Tim Smith's coming back into the side. Uh, he was away last week uh, as best man. Uh, and Cody Lovell will also come back into the side today. So uh, two changes there. And, you know, Tim Smith's is a big part of our, our attack. And uh, we're really happy to have him back. And hopefully he can lead the line uh, a little bit better than we did last week. Any tactical changes with the, uh, the way the side's been playing over the last couple of weeks? Have you tweaked anything on the tactical front? Uh, well, Tim Smith is a big part of our tactical play, so you know, it, on, because the pitch is quite wet today, it's an opportunity to get the ball into him uh, quite quickly, um, as, as well with Carl Tabula having another game under his belt. We look, we're hope, hopeful of trying to get the ball forward uh, quickly, um, safety first in our half with the conditions, and, uh, and, and just go from there. It's, it's really the, the same tactics we've, we've been using for seven years. Confident of a victory here today uh, against Lions FC? Hopeful, uh, more so than confident. I believe, I mean, they're a good side. I, you look at the way they set up with Musson up front, two wide guys, um, a, a hard worker in midfield. To be honest, they've copied a lot of what we've been trying to do. And uh, we had a very difficult game uh, away at Lions and um, beat them 3 0, but that wasn't a true reflection of the game. So, look, a mistake here, a mistake there, that'll, that'll decide the result today, I imagine. The inclusion of Tim Smiths and Cody Lovell will increase the potency of the attacking force of uh, Rochdale Rovers today? Yeah, of that there's absolutely no question. You know, um, Rochdale really, they, they do rely heavily on Tim Smiths and this year, you know, he scored 14 goals for, for Rochdale. So, you know, that, that's been proven and they missed him last week. They really did miss him and uh, a, a very unexpected defeat against North Pine. And, and of course, Cody Lovell, he pops up as and when you want him and um, he, he's great all around the park. So two, two welcome recruits for their side again today. We spoke to Graham Ross, and uh, this is what Graham had to say about today's match. Any um, changes to the side from last week? A uh, couple of changes. Uh, Matt Osman hasn't pulled through this week. Uh, Brody Kenyon's still out, uh, so two big losses for us. Uh, replaced by a couple of younger boys uh, that are full of energy and looking to take their, their place in the first team. So, so you know, I'm very confident with them stepping in. Uh, boys that did a job for us last year in Div 1, so you know they're eager to, to step up. Yeah, and so a slight tactical change. Uh, we're well aware of their pace out wide, 
So we're looking to combat that. So there's been a slight tactical change to how I've set it up today. And we'll see how we go. Confidence level for today's game? You're confident of getting um, a victory here or something out of today's game? Yeah, interesting. We had a, a good chat, uh, obviously, Tuesday night with all the rain this week. So we had a, a chance to sort of reflect on the seasons thus far. Uh, we all sat down and had a good heart-to-heart. And, you know, boys uh, spoke about what they wanted to achieve this year and we reset our goals. And so, you know, sometimes talk is cheap, but hopefully if the boys, uh, you know, step up today and, and produce what they spoke about Tuesday night, then, uh, yeah, we're quietly confident that we'll, we'll have a crack anyway. The loss of Matt Osman and uh, Brody Kenyon is a, a bitter pill, I think, to swallow for Graham. Uh, two very influential midfielders. He's brought in a couple of young fellows who will, I suppose, look to stamp their authority on the game and uh, make a claim for a regular first-team spot. Yeah, absolutely. It's a golden opportunity for them at Lions uh, this season to, to, to do exactly that. The same two players were out last week against Redlands United and, um, you know, it may have been undoing in that game. As you said, uh, Matt Osman is very influential around the park. Um, so he's got to deal with them losses again. Um, look, I think they're a very, very good side, Queensland Lions. Coming to Rochdale Rovers, though, is a, is a very different affair altogether. Yes, Underwood Park, not the easiest place to get points. OK, as I do with all our football uh, Brisbane media analysts, I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you, what are your thoughts on today's game briefly and a half-time score? OK, well, I did some stats at home prior to coming out here today and um, if, if you don't mind me having a quick look at these, I've got here that um, during, this is during the course of the season, Roast Rovers have scored just over three a game. They've conceded just over one a game. Uh, Lions have scored just under two and a half a game and they've conceded one and a half a game. Now, stats really don't lie. I think this will be a close game. Um, there's not going to be too much to choose between the two sides, but uh, at home, based on those stats, I, I simply have to go for Roast Rovers. I, I just can't see them losing three games on the trot. Half-time, 1-1. One, one. The officials for this evening's match are referee Martin Krenes and his assistant referees Ashley Beecham and Renee Coghill. Thompson with the throw. Carlos with the clearance. Sato back in. Carlos once again. Khan in a foot race with his starters. Oh, gets there just ahead of the central defender. He'll pick up a card for this, I'm sure. Yes, he does. Thomas with the free kick into the box. Thompson with the clearing header. Izakawa back in. Sato with a shank clearance. Oh, Gray's picked up. A stray arm, I think. He's not happy. Free kick to Rachdale. Sato for Mundy, cuts in, Ooh. doesn't get the ball away, Khan, past Gray, will he take on if Sathis, yes he does, he's around the back, goes for the heel, straight for a Sathis, his clearance is blocked, Thomas, yes, Ryan the lead in the sixth minute here at Underwood Park. Thomas with the corner, driven in. Ooh, and a header there. Goes straight at Aparicio. Simic, I think, is on the ground. It's a head clash. Let's have a look. Oh, he's got a stray arm, I think. Maybe an elbow. Wasn't intentional. He's out, I think. It's serious. Aparicio gesturing to the bench. Substitution has to be made very early. Simic doesn't look well. Not sure he knows exactly where he is at the moment. Tabulo with the corner. Driven in. And Thomas does a defensive job. Tabulo again. Drives it in. Oh, it's come off Thompson's feet. Carlos Musson, I believe, cleared it. And Burley shot. Well over the bar. Mundy for Gray. Both sides guilty of giving it away. Lovell, return ball for Monday. He's in behind. Cuts it back. H 
Hastings shot straight into the defender. And ball wellied clear. Khan and Thompson. Khan uses his pace. He's around him. He gets his head up, cuts back in, goes round, clips it to the far post. And Lovell comes back, looking to clear it. Thompson does well. Khan's got it again, cuts it back. Carlos gives it away. Lovell loses out to Thomas. And it's throw for Lions. Thompson with the throw. Flicked on by Tabulo. Khan holds it up well. They play themselves out of trouble. Tobin gets his head up. Looks to switch play. Mundy gets a touch. Lovell. Heavy touch. Loses out. Thomas. Zakawa. Inside. Mundy comes back. Cleans up. Gray forward. Smith's back. Hastings gets around Carlos for Smiths. Tabulo, good close control, rolls it for Hastings, can't get it back. Smith shoots with his left, can't get any power behind it. Easy pickings for Burrows. Tobin with the throw. Carlos does well, back for Tobin. Khan. Keeps possession. Musson is a cower. Dispossessed. Hastings, the level. They win it back. Zakawa looking for support. Finds it Aviles. Forward. Musson in behind. And his shot goes past the post. Aparicio goes long. Looking for Smith. Finds him. He gets a second chance. Lovell. A little bit of space. Goes to deliver. Court claims for handball and yes, says the referee. Tabulo shoots and oh, somehow Burroughs has kept that out with their staffers and Thompson free at the far post. Lovell. Hacks clear. Well done by Sato. Gray gets it back. Burley puts it into the box. It's a good looking ball. Burroughs has taken a knock. If Starthus had every right to go for it though. Let's have a look. Burley. He, well, he, by that side, he's offside. Burroughs. One by Gray. Thomas gets a head in there. Cower gets in there. Sato looking for options. Plays it up the park. Hastings. For Smiths. Back out by Hastings. Puts it into the middle. Great touch. Musson battling. Wins it. Aviles out on the far side. Cower turns well. Thomas. Beautiful football from Lyon. Switch of play. Looking for Carlos. Goes down. Asked for a penalty. Didn't see it myself. Let's have a look again. Thompson was there. There's no touch. Hastings with the throw. Tabulo. Back for Hastings, puts it into the box. Lovell wins the header, but straight into the hands of Burrows. Who slows it down. Goes long. Ball comes back. Butler still going. Play back for Aparicio. Oh, he's taking a bobble. Going straight up there. Oh, Thompson's touch is poor. Wilson. Foul on the edge of the box. Rochdale not happy with the decision. Again, Thomas Territory. We know what he did last week. Thomas! He's 
Have a look. Perfect free kick through the top of the wall. Aparicio rooted to the spot. Fantastic free kick. Hastings rolls it back. And that's the half time whistle here at Underwood Park with Lions leading two goals to nil. A discussion between Gray and the referee. Dave. You call it for 1-1. One, one. I don't think anyone expected to see the dominance from uh, Lions as it has been in this first half. No, certainly not. I was saying to you just before we came on air, uh, I think the best, the best noise that Brownie would have heard in this first half was the half-time whistle. Uh, Rochdale have been at 7s and 8s all over the park. Defensively, they appear to have no shape at all. And credit to Lions, they are fully deserving of their 2 0 lead. As with last week's game when uh, Lions played Redlands, the two most influential players were Greg Thomas and Shaheel Khan. Once again, they've been the two most influential players in this game today. Shaheel Khan has been outstanding. He is a very exciting young talent. And of course, the uh, Greg Thomas trademark free kick. 2 0 down, it's a long way back for Rochdale Rovers. Well, as you say, Greg Thomas picks up the, uh, picked up the Pele goal of the week last week for his for his effort against Redlands, and uh, he only duplicated it. There, same spot, same place, same result. Yeah, it was a wonderful free kick, and look, they scored the opening goal in the opening five minutes. They scored the second goal in about the fourth or fifth minute of stoppage time in the second half, so a goal at either end of the half. And as I said earlier, you know, Queensland Lions are fully deserving of their 2-0 lead. There's a long way back for Rochdale Rovers. I'm sure Tim and Kenny will be in the dressing sheds now, uh, letting the boys know in no uncertain terms what they need to do for the second half. And there certainly needs to be a big improvement from Rochdale if they want to get anything out of this game now. But I certainly still wouldn't put it beyond them. What do you see Rachel have to do to get back into this game? Well, for me, they just need more quality ball around the park. You know, they're turning the ball over very, very cheaply. Uh, the key players for them, the, the danger players that always look for, Tim Smith, Reese Hastings and Tabulo, they really haven't had uh, many touches of the ball at all. They're just not being able to get involved in the game. Uh, they've created very little in front of goal. And, and as I say, Lions, Lions have definitely been the team in the ascendance for almost the entire half. From Rossi's point of view, I don't see him making any changes at all. And why would he? You know, I mean, you don't fix something that's not broken. And, uh, and certainly in this first half, Queensland Lions are not broken. So uh, they're going very, very well. Tim, I, I would imagine he'll probably give it 10, 10 minutes or so in the second half. He'll give these players that, that played the first 45 minutes an opportunity to correct some of the wrongs. Uh, if that doesn't happen, I'm sure he'll make changes. I mean, Rovers need some points out of this game. A final score. Oof, that, uh, it's a hard question, <laughs> that, I know. That is a tough one. Look, I, I, I do see a way back uh, for Rochdale. Whether they're going to get all the way back, I don't know. I think they will score. Um, I'm going to change my view based on what I've seen in this first half, and I'm going to I'm going to say three-one to Lions, which uh, which will throw the title race wide open again. It certainly will. Second half here at Underwood Park. Tabulo with the corner, swung in. Header off, Gray. It hasn't gone in. Hacked up the field. Sato forward. Burley back. Khan for Musson. Aviles for Campbell. Back for Burrows. Cut out. Smith. Looking to put in. Hastings, and finally Aviles comes across. Burrows goes long. Off Gray, Khan, still going. Gets his head up, rolls it forward. Sakawa can't squeeze it through. Thomas for Butler. Rolls it in, Khan. Aviles, Thomas, knocking it around well. Great ball forward, off his shoulder. He gets there and makes it 3 0 in the 50th minute. He's got some luck. The finish was class. Let's have a look. Come off the back of his shoulder, dropped perfectly, and he's put it into the side netting on the far side. Substitution for Rochdale. If staff is off, Dumpy's on. 
clipped forward. Sate with the ball up the line. Smits. The tabulo. Takes on Tobin. Gets the ball into the box. Campbell with an important header. Oh, it's bounced. Aviles away. Is a cower. Burley. Little bit of space. Dumpies back for Burley. Tries to squeeze it through. Finally gets it wide. Mundy. Alviles gets the touch. Or oh, clever. Is a cower goes down. Burley forward. Aviles clips the ball forward. Khan in a foot race. Sato wins it. Burley slows it down. Out for their skipper Thompson. Back for Burley. Dumpies. Been lively since he came on. Tabulo still going. Oh, isakawa has gone down. Tabulo rolls in. Smith. Smith shoots and puts it wide of the mark. Throw in. Back for Aviles. Into the box. Gray with the header. Baricio comes. Oh, Munn with the header. And Thompson off the line. First time ball for Hastings. Got support. Still going. Has a shot. Well wide of the mark. Gray rack for Aparicio. Looking for Mundy. Flicks it forward. Lovell. For Hastings. Out for Tabulo. This is better from the Rovers. Still going. I think he was grabbed. It's hard to tell. Munn. Plays it forward. Butler. Musin on the near side screaming for it. Finally it comes across. Finds Musin. He's got some space. He shoots. Puts his shot. Well wide of the mark. Let's have a look. There was a hand. Hard for the referee. Needed some help from his assistant there if there was a grab. Tabulo has argued the point too much and found himself with a card. Burrows' goal kick only goes as far as way. Aviles does well. Mussen forward for Khan. Gets around Gray. Goes to take on Mundy. Good defending from the former Raw man. Gets the free kick. Takes it early. McLean, who's giving it away. Thomas forward early. Musson, oh, look to roll it. Run wasn't made to the near post. Way. Touch by Dumpies. McLean forward. Smiths. Still got it. Rides the challenge. No. There's a card involved. It won't be play on. Campbell picks himself up a card. Tabulo over the ball. Tabulo! Oh, he shot just wouldn't dip. Good free kick. Khan forward. Musson. Oh, his touch has let him down. Sato. Heavy touch. He's given it away in the middle of the park. Khan. Steps inside Monday. Goes down. Claims a free kick. Ray's given it away. Zikawa inside. Thomas changes direction. Tobin forward for Mulson. Tries to turn. Can't. McLean. Burley. McLean. Dumpies. Back for McLean. Good tight football from the Rovers. Smith. For Way. Way in! And Burroughs with an important save. Tabulo will let this run out for a corner. Driven in. Smiths with the header. Burroughs with a touch. Munn away. Wilson. 
If you do fancy something, you've got about five minutes to run down. Up the line. Flicked on. Gray. Burley. Dumpies. For Mundy, in a little bit of space. Steps inside. Loses out. Good challenge by McLean. Wins the ball. Butler cramping. Ball into the box. Great defensive header from Campbell. Clears the ball up the park. Musson. Quick throw. Dumpies. Back for Gray. Pins it forward. McLean. Good touch. Good turn. Smiths. Edge of the box. McLean. For Way. Gets the ball across. The touch off Campbell goes out for a corner. Lovell with the corner. Everybody in there. Bodies down. Bodies everywhere. Mundy. Shoots. Burrows with an important save to his left. And Smiths. Denied at the near post by the young keeper. Apparitio goes long. Looking for Smiths. Genny finds him. Thompson forward. Tabulo. Gets around his man. Clips it into the box. Gets cleared away. Gray forward. Mundy. Inside. Dumpies. McLean. It made a difference to two young blokes since they've come on. To the far post. Burrows comes and punches clear. Tabulo. Thompson with the throw. Dumpies. Back for Tabulo. His cross takes a deflection. Smith's in hard. Back for Tabulo. Tabulo's touch lets him down. He wins it back. Thompson. Inside for Dumpies. Gets it back. Slides it across. Ruben Way comes in from the far side and pulls one back for the Rovers in the 80th minute here at Underwood Park. Burrows goes long. Mundy wins the header. Thomas up the park. Sato wins the header. McLean out for Thompson. For Tabulo. Ball caught between his feet. He does ever so well to get around his man. Puts it into the box and Smiths with a diving header. Puts it just wide of the mark. Burley. For Thompson. Forward. Looking for Smiths. Burrows comes and collects. Second half substitution for Rolls it short. Campbell. Plays it up the park. Musson. Khan. Back for Musson. Steps around Gray. One on one. Shoots and slides it into the bottom corner to make it 4 1 in the 86 minute. Thompson for Dumpies. Changes direction. Way. Drives it into the box. That's headed clear by Devin Mund. Pabulo with the ball into the box. And oh, there we go! Thompson gets on the end of the header and makes it 4 2 in the 88th minute. Mundy with the throw. Smiths does well. Dumpies. Goes wide. Tabulo. Again gets around. Drives it in. Well defended. Shots blocked. Dumpies. Finally, Lions get a toe on it and put it up the park. Out wide. Way wins the header. Dumpies. Gives it away. Thomas. Dumpy's looking to win the ball back. He's a cow forward. Butler. He's a cow looking for support for Butler. Out for Thomas. And Thomas puts his shot wide of the mark. 
Mandy. Way. Oh, hits Mandy on the run. Thomas forward. Everly Les. Out for Schofield. Goes around Gray. Way. Good use of the body. Clever stuff from Ruben Way. Gray. Dispossessed. Aviles looking to get online. Goes down. Mussan denied by a great save from Mario Aparicio in the Rochdale goal. Burrows. And that's the final whistle here at Underwood Park. Which sees the score. Lions FC 4, Rochdale Rovers 2. Kenny, what can I say? Um, from my point of view, I suppose, an uh, un Rochdale like performance tonight. Depending on what you call Roch Rochdale like, I mean, it wasn't un Rochdale like compared to last week or the week before that, was it? So um, that's the way we are playing at the moment. Um, if I've not got much to say, it's honestly because I don't know what to say, you know. It's, uh, uh, I should have probably got. 11 or 14 players out here to do this interview, maybe they can explain what, what happened because uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of what went on early, early do it well for the first 70 minutes wasn't how they were instructed to do things but uh, anyway that's what it was. Uh, I thought we were better once Keenan and Jack come on the field, uh, you know, played some possession keeping passes and, and opened them up and I suppose maybe another bonus for us, I think Carl played himself into a bit of form, you know, he was uh, in the last 20, Carl was pretty good as well, but uh, I, I, it's hard to see us winning the league from here, teams that lose four games in the league don't, don't usually win the league, but uh, I don't know, funny things can happen. To be fair though, um, it, it's clubs and sides go through patches uh, like this, it's something that you probably haven't gone through for Quite enough. I can't remember the last time Rochdale lost three games. Oh, no, we can't. We'll try I mean, other clubs, mate. We, we, I, I, I don't remember us uh, losing three in a row. Um, and I've been here 23 years, you know, so. Um, just for a long time, we didn't look as if we were going to score, you know. We didn't score last week. It was a long time a day. We didn't, we didn't look. It was pretty horrible to watch for me, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about Lions, I'm just talking about my team. Uh, Lions are entitled to play whatever way they want, and they got they scored four times, which is uh, which is pretty good anywhere, but I suppose coming here, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just hard hard to watch, you know. It's hard to to work out what was going on, and uh, as I say, I, don't, I really don't know what to say, you know. It's, it's hard work doing this. <laughs> Uh, you have to do it. I mean, you know, we, we come here, we got we got beat. Lions, uh, Lions were better than us. We were only on top for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes of the game. But before that, I don't think we were even second best. You know, we were, we were we, daylight was second. So uh, yeah, that's life, isn't it? Uh, Graham, we did the uh, pre-game interview. Um, if I had suggested to you a 4-2 victory here at Underwood Park, you, you might would have you laughed at me. Oh, it definitely would have uh, laughed at you, Blanche. There's too much respect there, son. But <laughs> no, but no one comes here and puts four past Rochdale. You know, it's very, very rare. And them coming off the back of two losses, you know, we knew how hard it was going to be. You know, I can't remember the last time they've lost three straight. So uh, no, you know, absolutely over the moon to come here and get three points. The scoreline really is irrelevant. It's the perfect uh, bounce back from the late equaliser against you last week. You performed well, a great game of football, and you've come on, come back and played even better than you did against Red, uh, Redlands and uh, the perfect response from your players. Yeah, very frustrating. You know, I said to the players before the game that, um, you know, if we think we're a top six or a top four side, then we need to beat one of those sides. We haven't beaten one of those sides all year. So it was either stand up and be counted today or, you know, have a good look at yourself. So we've done that against, you know, arguably one of the, the top two sides. And, um, you know, hopefully it's the, the platform for us to really, you know, kickstart our season now. It may very well put you into the six again. Another couple of wins in the, on the trot and you can conceivably be up in the top four running into the end of the season in very good form and uh, getting better each time we see you. 
hopefully, uh, you know, we I, I had a bit of a plan in the back of my mind. The last three games, you got Wynnum, Redlands, Rochdale all in a row. I was hoping for to pick up four points out of those three games. We've done that tonight, so uh, hopefully we can kick on. We, you know, it needs to get on a roll now, and uh, you know the sides below us are getting stronger each week, so that's not going to be easy. Obviously, everyone knows the history of Lions, you know, and um, we'd really like to get back there as quickly as possible. You know, it's I think it's healthy for the league to have a strong Lions, and you know that's my job at the end of the day to, you know, to have a side that's performing, you know, for for our club as quickly as possible. But today, you know, was was tremendous. You know, we had some young boys in there that worked their butts off, stuck to a game plan. You know, we tried to double team them out wide. We we know their pace and they're, they're very direct with their wide players. We had a game plan that there's always two two of our defenders are on their wide players and it worked. They didn't get behind us all day other than maybe Ruben in the last five minutes there. Dave, you gave a, um, a prediction of 3-1. Uh, you got the right uh, call on Rochdale. They did eventually put the ball into the back of the net um, and probably shaded the last 15, 20 minutes. Mm. But at the end of the day, Four goals to the good Lions, maybe just at the end of the day they took their foot off the pedal just that little bit at the end. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And you know, when you make predictions in football, you can often end up with egg on your face, and that could well have been the case today. That last five minutes was uh, was just silly, wasn't it? Just go, goals going in left, right, and centre. Um, I did say at half time that I thought that Rochdale would get back into the game. Um, unfortunately, they are our own worst enemy, and just as in the first half, they conceded a goal within the first five minutes of the second half. They conceded the, the killer goal again five minutes from the end of the second half. And at the end of the day, they, you know, Brownie, Brownie can have no complaints at all. You know, I think on the day, Lions were the better side and, and deserve to win. It opens the title race up. It opens the final series right up now. It's uh, it's got to the stage where it could be anyone's anyone on any given day. Everyone's knocking each other about. This is going to be possibly last day before we find out who the actual champions of the league are going to be. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, and I think that's good for the game. It has to be good for the game. I mean, well, I I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before that Rochdale had it tied up with six or seven games to go. Now, credit to Rochdale, and they thoroughly deserve to, to have it sewn up at that point. They were by far the best football team. But certainly from a, a, a viewing point of view, you know, it, this is this is what you want from football. This is what you want from the, the highest level of football in Brisbane, in the Veto League. And um, at this point in time, probably any one of the top four sides are genuine title contenders. They can genuinely win the title. Um, outside of the top four I think it's probably a bit of a push, but certainly top four, yeah, on any given day it could be anyone's. The quality of football was quite impressive for the, the conditions. There was obviously no rain, but the field is boggy and a bit bobbly um, due, to the, due to the conditions that we've had in Brisbane here over the past week. Uh, but the, the style and uh, the football standard, I thought, was of a very, very high standard. Yeah, certainly. You know, I mean, this second half, we knew Rochdale had to come out. They, they did come out. They were, as, as an attacking team, they were a far better side than they were in the first half. Um, but as I said, they, they made a rod for their own back by conceding that early goal in the, at the start of the second half. And that really was the killer for them. You know, they worked their way back into it. They created numerous opportunities. And, and maybe if they'd stuck another one of them away, it could have been a different outcome. You know, more pressure on, on lines, and, and you never know what could happen. I thought defensively, though, uh, today, Rochdale simply weren't good enough. And when I'm not just talking about the back four, I'm talking across the park from the forwards right through midfield and the back four just, just weren't up to it today. And uh, as I said, I think the better side won and I don't think that Brownie would have any complaints at all. Right, thank you, Dave. Um, good debut on uh, <laughs> FBTV as a uh, football analyst. Um, insightful, knowledgeable and uh, just about got it right uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I, I got to say, I, I actually predicted a Rochdale win at the start. Um, but based on that first half, I, I couldn't see anything other than a, a Lions win. And, and whether we've got the score long, the out, the wrong, the outcome was, was correct. And uh, no, thank you very much. It's been very enjoyable. On Saturday, the cameras will be out at Carmichael Park for the round 18 clash between Wolves FC and Redlands United.